Hi, so today I'm gonna talk about the causes of World War I. So first of all, I wanna start off saying that there were five main causes. The first one being alliances between the participating countries. There were two main alliances that formed that I'm gonna talk about later. Then there's a part that I like to call the tension zone between imperialism, militarism, and nationalism. Of course, we're gonna talk about them later. And then we have the last one, that was the immediate cause. It was the cause that made the war like happen. And it was the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. So there was, there's also like a fun fact that normally they're called the four main causes and then the assassination is like the immediate cause, like it's put in as separately, but I wanted to add it as like five main causes, but they're normally called four and they're also called main because it's like an acronym, like the M stands for militarism, the A stands for alliances, the I for imperialism, and the N for nationalism. So I thought that was like a very fun fact. So first we have alliances. So basically there were two main alliances, the triple alliance that was between Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy, and then the triple entente that was between France, Britain, and Russia. There were a few other countries in each alliance, but these are like the major ones. And what an alliance meant is that they, they were gonna defend each other in case of war. So that's, what, that's why alliances in this were so important because if one of the countries got attacked, if they had an alliance, like all of the other countries had to get involved to defend them because that was what their alliance was for. Uh, so this was the problem with alliances because there were two countries only that got in a war like to start off with but then the alliances made like other like a lot of other countries get involved so that's why it became the world war <laughs> and then we're entering the tension zone these like three topics didn't like directly like caused the war but they were like very important aspects of it that i like to say that caused tension tension between countries between governments so that's why like the tension built up until it exploded in the war so first we have the desire of imperialism imperialism basically means that a country wants to gain a lot of territory a lot of space in order to become an empire so this, is, this causes tension because it causes conflict and agreements between countries within Europe because they wanted to extend over to another nation. So whenever a country wanted to extend to another nation, but so did another country, they either had a conflict about it or they got into an agreement about the extension of the nation. But sometimes the agreement, the agreements could end badly, like could end... Like, you know, the agreements could be broken and could end badly and cause more conflict. So, and this was because countries wanted to improve, like, dominance over other countries. That they were, like, the bigger one and they were, like, the empire. So this also caused a lot of tension because if a country did become, like, bigger than the other one, they were going to, like, fear each other. And, and yeah. So then we have militarism. Militarism. Again, it had like a, like this caused a lot of tension because militarism is the desire to build like a better army, like have a better military system. So whenever like a country started getting like a lot of weapons, like a lot of like were, was getting very good in this aspect, like neighboring countries or the alliances like started fearing them. So then this caused like fear and tension. So that's why I like to call it the tension zone because it didn't necessarily, like militarism didn't necessarily start the war, but it did cause tension for a lot, a lot of years. And it made you like look over to which country had good weapons, good army, and would be good for war. And Germany, like in this case, Germany was the greatest, had the greatest increase in military buildup. So that's why it was one of the main characters in this war. And then we have the last one of the tension zone that was nationalism. And nationalism, as I quoted here, is the identification with one's own nation to support for its interest. 
So this has like three main points that I would like to touch. One is the will to fight for your own country. Like if you don't have nationalism, like if you don't care for your country, if you don't support it, you're not going to fight for it. So nationalism was very important in this war because he wanted everyone to have it so they would fight for their own country. And then two, it creates competition between nations, like how I've been saying, like each country wanted to prove that they were the better one. So if like all their population had like very good nationalism, like they were a very well represented country, then they were going to be looked as like the better one. And then, it, like, the three of them, militarism, imperialism, and nationalism, are tied, are, like, tied together. Like, these are, like, very related to one another. Because if you don't have nationalism, then you don't, you don't have militarism. Because if you don't have people that love their nation, they're not going to want to join the military and fight for their country. And if you don't have a good army to fight for your country, then you're not going to be able to extend to other nations and have an empire imperialism so that's why like everything is connected and then you have the last one this is the immediate cause like this is the cause that like everybody like everybody knows like in the general media this is what is recognized as like the cause that caused the war so basically what happened i feel like everyone knows that this was the main reason but like nobody knows what like actually happened or like how it did so the immediate cause basically was that an apparent heir that was Archduke Frank Ferdinand was supposedly going to heir the throne. So a lot of people had an eye on him because of course he was gonna get a lot of money, a lot of territory. And he was scheduled to visit Sarajevo, which is like a little town in Europe. And he was going there because he was going to check on the military system. Like he was just going to like put order, but people knew that he was going. So then he went with with his wife. So then him and his wi wife on the way there got shot to death by the Black Hand, which ignited the war. The Black Hand was um, a Serbian group that was against against him and against Austria-Hungary. So his death was on June 28th, 1914. And I have here like a little timeline, which I think like the times on this war are like very... They're very particular, and you will see why. His death was on June 28, 1914, as I've mentioned. And then exactly a month later, on July 28, 1914, Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia. Like, of course, Austria-Hungary, well, didn't agree that they killed him. So they declared war on Serbia. And this goes back again to the alliances. Like, these, like... In the start, these were these were the only two countries that were at war. But then, because of the alliances, everyone started to get involved. So then, four years later, the war came to an end, but a temporary end, when Germany called for a ceasefire, the 11th of November, 1918. So basically, what a ceasefire means is that the war is like put on hold. Basically, like it temporarily ends. And it's time, it's time for discussion, literally, like it's time for agreements to be made and pacts to be signed and come to agreements between the participating countries. But of course, I mean, Germany is going to be on the downside of it, but it's like a temporary ending until exactly five years later, if you see the death of the Archduke was June 28th and the war officially ended on June 28th as well, but five years later. And the, the war ended with the signing of the Treaty of Versailles. These are my, this is my reference list. And thank you. Thank you for listening.